Hey everybody. Today we're combining data frames in R using the left join command and talking about mutating joins a little bit more generally. All the join commands we're going to use today are in the dplyr package that's included in the tidyverse family of packages and I've already loaded that up with library tidyverse. We're going to do two different examples and the first one uses some data sets in the baby names package. So you'll see I've loaded that up with library baby names. There are two data frames in this set that we're going to be interested today, interested in today. First of all is just the baby name set. Let's take a look at that. It's a tibble, so it'll print nicely. Here we have about 2 million observations with five variables each. Your sex and name are all exactly what they sound like. N is the number of times that a certain name was assigned to a child born in that year with that sex. Um, and prop is the proportion of children of that sex in, born in that year that were assigned that baby name. Now, this data is taken from the United States Social Security Administration um, database. And so it only includes, um, it only refers to individuals that were assigned social security numbers that were born in each of those years. So it's not full baby name data, even from the United States in those years. For context, we're going to want to bring in some information about the numbers of people born in each of those years that actually um, applied for social security numbers. And that information is contained in the applicants data set. Notice here we only have 266 rows, one for each of the years in question and each of the genders in question. What we'd like to do is to take this baby names data set, the one up top, and um, include the n all column. So for each year and sex in this baby names data set, we'd like to have an additional value for the n all. There's going to be a lot of repetition here, of course. For instance, from 1880 for females, 97605, we have one row in the applicant's data frame, but many, many, many rows in the baby names data frame. The main command that we're going to use here is left join. Like all commands in the dplyr package, it takes a data frame as its first input and gives back a data frame at the end, technically a tibble. The um, first argument we're going to pass it here is the data frame that we want to start adding columns to, that we want to grow. The second argument is going to be the data frame that we want to take columns from. There we go. And for our most basic left join command, that's really all we need. So let's go ahead and hit enter here and see what we get out. As advertised, the result is a tibble. Notice that it has the same number of rows as the first data frame that we input here, the baby names. But that there is this one extra column and all taken from the second data frame that we passed it, in this case, applicants. I particularly want to highlight the message that we got after we typed in the left join command joining by year and sex. These are the so-called key columns. These are the columns that specifically identify each observation in the first um, data frame that we gave this command, here, baby names. What R did underneath the hood is to look at the baby names and applicants data frame and find all of the columns that have identical names, in this case, year and sex. R is doing what we call a natural join here when it finds all of those columns that have the names in common. Um, these identify individual observations in the first data frame, and they're used to um, trace the corresponding observations in the second data frame. If we don't want to do the join by the default um, columns, all the columns that the two have in common, we can specify by by ourselves, and that's what we'll do in our second example here. Our second example is going to be using some data frames built from um, some built-in state-level data, U.S. states contained in R. And um, here's the code that I'm using to generate a couple of data frames. I'm not going to go through it, but if you'd like to replicate this example, it might be interesting to you. I'm building two data frames here. First is um, states geog. Let's take a look at that. And I clearly misspelled it, state geog. There we go. This has five columns and 50 rows, 50 rows because there are 50 states in the United States. We see the name of the state, the area in square miles, the geographic center in longitude and latitude. State reg, on the other hand, lists all 50 states along with their two letter abbreviation and the region of the country in which they are considered to lie, um, southwest, northeast, etc. 
So what we'd like to do is to take the state geog data frame and add a column here showing what region each of these individual states lie in. The big problem that we have here is that the variable that is identifying the observations uniquely is, has a different name in each of the two data frames. In the state geog data frame, it's called state, and in the state reg data frame, it's called abbreviation, ABBR. So we're going to start off our command exactly the same with this um, left join. Actually, let's go ahead and use a pipe here. Because this is in a dplyr package, it plays nicely with the pipe. So let's take our first data frame, in this case, state geog, and let's pipe that into the left join command. So that'll pass state geog to left join as the first argument. Our second argument is going to be state reg, the second um, data frame that we want to use for our join. Now we need to specify our key columns with the by command. And the syntax here is to pass by a named character vector. And the first value in that named character vector, I guess I should say, the, um, the name of the, um, the values in our first, in this vector, are going to be just the name of the variable in the state geog data frame, in our first data frame that we want to join. So state is going to be the name of that column. And the second side of our equality here is going to be the corresponding name of the column in our second data frame, in this case, state reg. And in that data frame, it's called name. Let's start just by printing this out. Okay, we got exactly what we wanted, except that I got a bunch of NAs here. It's not actually name in my state reg, it's abbreviation. So you do have to specify the column properly. There we go. Now we can see we've still got 50 rows. We've taken the state geog data frame here with these five columns, and we've added two more columns to it, the two columns that were not included in the state reg data frame. We've got name and region. Uh, let's see here. Let's save this as states. And let's do a couple of other little things with this. I am not thrilled with um, the order of these columns. So let's do a select command to fix that. We'll pipe that data frame into select. First, let's have name. Then um, I want state, but I want to change the name. Let's call it abbreviation instead of state. After that, let's have region. And after that, let's have everything else. I have a whole vid on the select command. I'll throw a link up top if you're interested in learning more about that. And uh, let's see what we got. Great. Exactly what we would hope for. Name, abbreviation, region, and then everything else. I want to wrap up this video by talking a little bit about other joins in R. Here's an image I've taken directly from the R for Data Science book by Hadley Wickham and Garrett Grohlman, which I highly recommend, particularly for the chapter on relational data. At the, on the left side of each of these arrows, we have an illustration representing the two data frames that we're trying to combine, and on the right side of each arrow is the sort of output that you'll get. We've talked about left join, where we've taken um, two data frames and added some rows, I'm sorry, added some columns from the second data frame based on rows from the first. And that's what we're seeing in that top illustration. The right join does um, a very, very similar thing, except that it uses the rows of the second data frame um, and adds columns from the first. The full join, illustrated there on the bottom, takes rows from both data frames. And so this tends to introduce more NAs, because it's going to do so whenever you have an observation missing from one data frame or the other. 